Robson, in construction. Um, I'll do a little presentation on technology and construction sessions. Haven't really, previous to this year, used a massive amount of technology in construction sessions, but um, what was it, the side chain well, decided to have a go with it, and obviously you can see it too. Um, <coughs> why use technology for teaching and learning? Well, the way it's sort of sold to me was it allows learners to progress at their own pace, um, particularly using um, VLEs or uh, virtual learning uh, environments like Moodle. Uh, allows for good knowledge checks and formative assessment um, if it's used properly. Can be fun and engaging for the learner. Helps the teacher assess knowledge gaps. Uh, can develop a minimum core for ICT. And um, also new VR technology which helps practical sessions uh, by the use of augmented reality, which is something um, someone told me about. I did a bit of research on it, and companies like um, BMW are investing quite heavily in that at the moment, where you have this VR device that you look at an engine, the computer scans it in the VR, looks at the engine, and then it sort of 3D takes it apart and you can put it back together. Uh, so if you say you've got a problem with a manifold, you can, it quickly shows you where the manifold is, how to remove it, and so on and so forth, so for that part. Uh, it can help with task design in order to demonstrate deeper learning if used correctly. So that's the way we sort of solve the main sort of points we sort of solve it to me. Uh, the ones that I've used, um, <coughs> so I did a little bit of a go with Kahoot. I've not used that before. Um, Socrative and Moodle. Moodle, I had a, a bit more experience with before then, but I never uh, used it in sort of a classroom environment before. So the Kahoot quiz, uh, this is one that I did on fire extinguishers with a level one group. Um, and basically, there's a list of 20 questions, and I used it at the end of the session to sort of recap what boards, just to see what we've actually taken from the session. Um, <coughs> it's quite good, it's quite competitive, and we got involved with it really well. I think a lot of them had already used it at school level uh, before, which I was quite surprised at. So we got involved with it uh, really well. Um, <coughs> so we got some sort of questions that sort of we've been posed about each of them. Uh, one of them was, does Kahoot uh, help with the barriers to learning? And to be honest with you, there wasn't very much that I could sort of say about that that immediately sprung to mind. But um, I have got one of my learners, which is, who is very anxious, uh, doesn't like to be put on the spot particularly. Um, and so from that point of view, I was able to put some decent questions into the quiz. Uh, and she was able to answer them and get involved with the session a little bit more. So from that point, it was very good. Uh, it did engage all the learners, I thought, because they were all really competitive, all really um, wanting to get involved with it. Uh, that was good from that point of view. Um, I didn't think it was particularly great for a sort of formative assessment. It was good for a bit of a knowledge check, but because there's no way of sort of reviewing everything on it, I found it wasn't that good really for the formative assessment. So the benefits I put for Kahoot was <coughs> high student engagement, allowed a little bit of formative assessment so I could get a little bit of quick knowledge checked, but not, not a very good means of it. Um, it was very good to, from the point of view, you, didn't, oh, you don't always have to produce stuff. In fact, two of the fit quizzes which I did use in the end, someone else had created and I just borrowed them. Um, so it didn't take any time to set up. It was very easy to use uh, and it allowed for knowledge checks on the whole group. Uh, we are putting students on the spot. Limitations, it's limited by the re uh, reliability of the IT. Uh, some learners have problems with their phones, couldn't quite access it properly. Um, but I did have um, iPads available for them. Uh, it, it was difficult to track the responses as well, so I couldn't really uh, check that properly. Uh, it doesn't really <coughs> allow the quiz to be teacher paced as well. If I wanted it to stop it at the end of a question and see how well we did, um, it was quite difficult to sort of see who'd done what. 
I could stop it, but it didn't really tell me the information that I wanted. So the second one that I used was um, Socrates. Um, that was a bit more useful, I found. Uh, I liked that. Um, I, it was very teacher paced, so I could stop it at the end of each question, see how well the learners had done, uh, and sort of post some directed questions at the group to see you know, what they did know and what they didn't know. Um, <coughs> it also allowed me to print off a uh, paper copy as well. So, you know, if there was IT problems with the group, um, I could give them a, a printed copy. Again, with the last one, removing barriers to learning, I can only really say, to be honest, that it helped the learners with um, a bit anxious uh, and getting being picked on in the group for directed questioning. But, um, other than that, I, you know, I, I didn't really see the method to meet many barriers to learning. Uh, it was quite engaging in general. I thought um, the students did engage well with it. Not as well as the Kahoot. They didn't uh, get excited about it as much, but they did get involved. Uh, and I thought it was much better from the point of view of formative assessment. Personally, I found that very useful. Because uh, I could see how well each one had done on each of the answers. <coughs> so, Benefits uh, can be used at any level of group uh, because you just target quite and you load it up with questions that you want. If I was to use, say, a Kahoot for a level three group, you might find it a little bit um, patronising, maybe. I don't know. Uh, level one groups a little bit, but level three not so much. Um, I found that Socrative, uh, they liked it at all levels. Um, allows it for teacher pacing, as I pointed out. Answers can be submitted discreetly to avoid embarrassment. Great for formative assessment. Uh, allows for paper copies, so if there are any known IT issues. Uh, lots of different quiz formats to keep up engagement. And it gave me immediate feedback, which was really, really useful. So I could use that at the start of the session to recap, see what they remembered, or I could use it at the end of the session. Uh, there were some limitations. Android, Android phones didn't like it so much, uh, it seemed, but I Apparently, that's only on certain phones. If you lose an internet connection during the course of the quiz, it sort of fouls it up a little bit, particularly the data that you're trying to collect from it. Uh, and students can only access the quiz when the teacher's got the, app, the, the room active. Uh, it's not something they can just dip into at any point. Uh, you've got to have it open for that length of time. So that was Socrative. <coughs> Next one is completely different uh, thing altogether, Moodle. Um, started work on this about five years ago, I think, uh, for the level one, two, and three deployments, but never really used it. I put everything on there, but never used it because you know, I wasn't lecturing. But since I've been lecturing, uh, I found it immensely useful, uh, particularly uh, <laughs> with the uh, upcoming coronavirus and that sort of issue, I think I'm probably going to use it more because everything is online, the textbooks are online, the handouts that I use are online, um, we've got scoring packages to test their knowledge, that's online. Um, <coughs> some of these, we've got um, hand skills and practical info on there as well so that students can click on there. We've got loads of videos on how to cut a mortise and tenon joint, how to um, you know, sharpen the chisel. And for each of those videos that are on there, we've set online quizzes. So you can watch the video, answer some quiz questions, and it gives me a good understanding of, well, a reasonable understanding of, of what they've grasped and what they haven't. Um, so, yeah, uh, overall, um, quite like Moodle, quite a lot. And of course, because it's so broad and powerful, you can use it for whatever you want, and it can be very inclusive. So if you want to put things on there, like Word uh, documents or anything like that, Word's so powerful now as well that you can, you know, it can be to you, you can dictate to it. Um, you can even put lectures on there if you want to, if you want to film a lecture, upload it. Um, which means that you know, so you can you can do a lot of this from learners can do a lot from home, which I think makes it very accessible. Um, <coughs> so does it remove barriers to learning? I think so. Yeah, quite a lot, a lot more than the others. Um, oh, sorry. 
a lot more than the others um, because it's so broad and you can use it pretty much whatever you want. Um, I'm trying to think of an example, if um, you have someone who's maybe visually impaired or something like that or um, can't get to lectures, maybe they're ill or off, you've got stuff on there that you can direct them to, maybe it is the lecture uh, itself filming you or you can uh, you know, set questions based on that. Very useful. It's probably not as engaging uh, in its normal format uh, as the other two examples, um, but it really depends on how you set it up, I think, and what content is on there. So, you know, it is down to you. Uh, it's very good for uh, formative assessment, I thought. Um, very useful. Uh, as you can set all sorts of assignment tasks on there. So benefits, very customizable. Uh, learners can access content at any time. Lots of add-ins and plugins that you can use with it. Allows for independent learning. Um, using QR codes, learners can find instant information in practical. So we, in our practical books, we have little QR codes to um, say if they're doing a joint. Um, and they're racing ahead. So the three joints ahead of everybody else who want to find some information about it or watch a video, you click on the QR code, it takes them straight to that video. Um, so it's a great opportunity for learning at their own pace and stretch a challenge. It allows for student tracking, it's very good for that. Uh, limitation requires a bit of technical knowledge to set up. Um, I found it a rather a bit of a pain in the bum when I first started using it, but once you get into the habit of altering things and changing things, it's actually uh, Quite easy. It is time consuming uh, to set up if you're setting up a whole Moodle page uh, for yourself. Um, it is time consuming. Uh, not the most friendly user interface, I don't think. Although it is available, you know, on your phone, you can access it on your phone. Um, and it's not as engaging for the learner, but again, that depends how you use it. Oops. So the conclusion that I came to with the ones that I've used, uh, lots of different technologies are available. I've only used a small portion of them so far. Uh, each has their own use, uh, just like any tool. Um, so yeah, like any resource technology, is just a tool. You need to uh, learn and how and when to best apply it. Uh, it can be very useful in task design to improve engagement. So if there's certain parts of the session that you think could be useful to use a bit of um, something to pep it up a little bit or increase engagement. Might want to throw in a Kahoot quiz or something like that. Um, it's an extremely good um, for formative assessment, um, but reliability can be an issue. And some technology is a bit more inclusive than others as well. Okay. And that's pretty much it. How, how will it influence what you've learned now? Because mm -hmm. you said you had, weren't that familiar yeah. with some of it, but you're obviously a bit more familiar with Moodle. How will what you know now influence what you're going to do? Um, I think probably things like, um, for, for the use of Kahoot, for example, I've, I've learned that really from the point of view checking knowledge, it's sort of useful. It is kind of useful, but I think probably how I'm going to use that more is to sort of assess prior knowledge maybe, or to prompt people to think about things. So use it to question, what do you think this is the most, uh, you know, uh, I used it in one session where I said, I hadn't given them any training on it, I just said, what, what's, how many people die from electric shocks over the course uh, of a year in construction? There's a load of percentages to use them. That sort of question at the start of the session to prompt how I would, the majority of the session, I'm probably mm -hmm. using more for that. Because it gets them thinking, gets them engaged, and you have to make a guess. And then when you go in and give them the facts of it later, it's probably more likely to sink in a little bit more. So I probably use that technology a little bit more like that. Uh, uh, so I don't think I've changed that much how I use that. Um, use it at the start of the session uh, to recap on what I've done and just see what I've actually learned. I found that really useful. Um, I don't think I've probably changed how I use that that much. Um, I 
haven't, however, tried to use it for more deeper learning, uh, to put bigger questions in there, because mm -hmm. I don't know how that would work uh, effectively. But Moodle, again, I'm quite comfortable with that, with where we are with Moodle. Uh, it seems to be working. Okay. Any other questions? Okay.